Why secrets don't make friends when selling in this market. Buyers beware, okay? So there have been occasions where I've personally been out on the road with buyers or that I've walked into listing appointments and I open the door and immediately, if it's not my buyers that notice, it's me. Uh, and we notice that, you know, the sellers of that particular home are trying to sweep something under the rug. You know, um, people aren't pe people are smart. You know, people are pretty savvy. And uh, now more than ever, with the amount of information that we have. And I mean, look at how much maybe how much more. Um, you know now about real estate that you've been listening to this show and you're setting yourself up for success. So now when you're walking into places, now you're going to be one of many people who is educated that's going to see this stuff. So what these sellers do not realize is that they're immediately turning the buyers off and the buyers are thinking, what else is wrong with this property? So you don't, you don't want to have buyers with that mindset right away. So so, um, so one of the first things that I suggest, and if you've worked with my team or, or I in the past or recently, okay, um, one of the things that we suggest right off the bat to kind of help take care of this and to net you the most money in the end is uh, pre-list home inspections. Now, I know we've spoke about this in length on other shows and we're not going to you know, bore you with these details, but I got to hit the, the the point home. You know, we got to knock the ball out of the park when we list homes. And this is one of the many ways that we do it. OK, so, um, you know, I almost always, always get the reply from sellers. And, and believe me, I would I would say the same thing if I was sitting in their seat because it's it's outside of the box. They say, why am I going to pay for home inspections? You know, isn't that the buyer's job? And uh, the answer is yes and no. OK, so I like to think. If everybody is going left, I'm going to go right, okay? Because you need to do things that stand out. And um, when you do things that stand out in a, an exceptional way, you're going to set yourself up for success and you're really going to catch the buyer's eye, okay? So now I realize not everyone can afford, uh, you know, a $400 pre-list home inspection, um, so in that case, what we would do if you're, if you're tight on the budget, okay, that's okay. We would walk through the house and we would point out as much as we can that needs to be addressed by way of repair. Okay. Or what needs to be disclosed to buyers as far as known defects. Okay. So buyers, when they're walking through a property, okay, if they don't have these items disclosed and they're walking around and they're seeing all of these things pop up and all these little things here and there, then they're going to start to question the bigger things, okay? So that's why it is vital to fill out the seller's disclosure form in full with as much detail as you can, okay? Now, it's against the law for a real estate agent to fill that out for you. The home seller must the homeowner, you know, you, you must absolutely do that on your own, but your agent can guide you through it. So again, oftentimes, uh, if you're not going to do the home inspection, you should be, uh, you know, your agent can walk through the house with you and answer any questions that you have. If you, if you, you know of something that may be an issue, then you're going to want to bring it up to your realtor as well. And I always say, you know, when in doubt, disclose it, you know, just disclose it because here's the thing is that the buyers are going to have a home inspector going anyways and they're probably they're probably going to find something anyway so you're better off being upfront about it so they they don't feel that you're hiding anything and also if if you know that there's something in your property like let's just say mold or something you got to disclose it if you can't afford to take care of it you know you don't want to be held reliable later on okay we've seen it happen and you know, it's, it's, it's not good. Okay. Nobody wants to be held up in litigation or court. It's just absolutely crazy, especially weeks or months after the fact of selling a house, right? You just don't, you don't want that. So let's set you up for the best success all around for now and for in the future. Okay. You always do things on the up and up, which you know what? 95, not, maybe even 99% of most people do, which is good. There's a lot of good people out there. So hit, listen, here is a list of the most common quote unquote cover ups, okay, by sellers here in Rhode Island that we have seen. Cesspools, okay. Uh, it amazes me when people try to cover these up, okay, because, um, or they'll call it a septic system or whatnot. Well, legislation was passed, as you know, or may know, which makes 
homeowners or buyers responsible to switch the cesspool over to a um, septic system within 12 months of of purchasing the house. Okay, so oftentimes sellers believe they have to switch it over. No, buyers can do it, and they can use programs like a 203k, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, I have I have this blog on the roundtableradio.com so you can read into this further if need be or call me if you have a cesspool and are curious about selling 401-359-2338 because this is a big topic again 401-359-2338 and I've guided a lot of my sellers through this um but anyways so buyers are going to do home inspection when the 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 septic inspector is going to come out and open the tank right away and go oh my god you know, this this fails, you know, and you don't want somebody opening anything up in your house and going, oh, my God, that, that's never a good thing. You should see buyers faces when that happens. The next one is mold. Um, you know, people are afraid that it's so costly to clean up. And in some cases it can be OK, but it's common in, in, in many areas, you know, like, um, you know, uh, on the on the, the the roof sheathing. OK, it's it's up there if there's poor ventilation. Sometimes it just takes, you know, adding a ridge vent or pulling insulation away from, you know, the vents uh, and then and then clean that up. I've used Lynch restoration and they've gone out there and they're great. They're right out of uh, Cranston, I believe, and they cover all of Rhode Island and parts of Massachusetts. And you know what? They'll work with you. They're very inexpensive and uh, they'll get it done. But Long story short, just get that taken care of if, if, if you can, if you know about it. Don't try to paint over it. Don't try to put paneling over it because, well, first off, nobody wants paneling in their house anymore. And uh, and, and it will come through. It definitely through the paint after a while. And that's, again, you want to avoid any future problems, not to mention you want to be able to sleep sound at night knowing that, you know, this family that moved into your house is safe and sound, right? Next thing, water damage. Uh, it's no secret, guys, that a huge chunk of uh, people here in Rhode Island, huge chunk of houses got hit with the floods, uh, you know, back in, I believe, when was that? 2010, I think. Um, but outside of that, OK, don't throw a throw rug over, um, you know, some some pergo floors or over some uh, floor that has water damage. Um, because it's easy for somebody to see that. And again, they're going to say, what else are these guys hiding? OK, so I've got a long list of these things. And uh, from my experience that I've seen, and unfortunately, the show doesn't permit us uh, enough time to talk about all this stuff. So I'm always happy to help you out however I can and make suggestions, even if you're not uh, you know, in the market to sell or buy, whatever. We're here for you and uh, we're happy to, to, to be here every single week. And 